Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the Asheville yard. I'm going to show you all the kit we've got in the yard. I'm going to tell you why we've got it and what we use it for. So in the Asheville yard, you'll see a lot of kit that's generally associated with different sectors in this industry. We need all of this in one place at one time as a fully functioning hub to serve all our companies. Construction, waste management, aggregates, and ready mix concrete supply. Before I go into detail on any one item in the yard, I wanna explain the concept and the logic behind what we've done here. Everything in the Asheville yard is mobile. That means if we begin to go into a different sector or we decide to move, everything can be reshuffled or it can be lifted and put on the back of a lorry and taken elsewhere. In case you're wondering why there's a random phone box in the middle of the yard, this is a restoration project what we're working on, but there'll be a video about this. A major part of the Asheville city is scaffolding. We use it everywhere. We use it for platforms, we use it for stairs, we use it for storage. This enables us to be mobile if need be. This is the car park, I know, not very interesting. But what I wanna show you are these Jersey barriers made courtesy of Asheville Concrete, which we use all over the yard to create separation in areas and safe pedestrian walkways. We have these to let people know safe places to cross. So, you walk to this area, you can clearly see a sign, stop, look left, look right, you walk across, to the other safe pedestrian area, which is here. So in this central shed in the yard, we have a hot wash, which is perfect because you can take all the dirt and grime off the lorries and machines. And we also have a compressor, so you can check your tire pressure and top your tire pressure up. What we can see here is Adrian cleaning out the hopper on the concrete pump. So he was at a job and they wouldn't let him clean it out properly because they didn't want all the concrete spread out into the road. He's come back to the yard and he's cleaning it out. This is essential to keep on top of maintenance. As if the sign wasn't a dead giveaway, this is the refueling bay. Now over here, we have our white diesel tank, which holds about 22,000 liters of white diesel. And we also keep red diesel in the yard in two separate tanks. Now, keeping diesel in the yard is something new for Asheville. It's a decision we made about 18 months ago. We felt that if we kept the diesel in the yard, we could save on costs, and also it would stop drivers going into petrol stations and sitting around for half an hour to an hour waiting to be refueled. Now, everybody comes back at the end of the day, they load with diesel, and hopefully they'll all do one extra job a day. Also, in the refueling bay, we have AdBlue and all the different types of admixes to create different types of concrete. What I'm trying to do is create an area where a lorry can reverse in, load all the fuels and admixtures he needs, and then be off out the gate as soon as possible. We try to use every square foot in the yard. So on top of these two containers, we created this scaffold platform, which is great for a view, and it's also great for storing tires. The process is, if you have a puncture, your wheel comes off, you change it, and you leave your puncture to be repaired. Once your puncture is examined, if it can be repaired, it's repaired and it's put back up here in the correct pile because we have three or four different tire sizes in storage. Skips. This is where we store our skips. We only do three size skips, so it's pretty easy, which is an eight yard, an eight yard crane skip and a 12 yard. We keep a few of them in the yard so it's quick for drivers when they come in to change over from one size to the other. So over here, we've got the storage base for the material which is used to make concrete. So we've got ballast, sand, 20 mil shingle and 10 mil shingle. We keep these materials in the central part of the yard because it's quick for the loading shovels to get it on and get it on the volumetrics as quick as possible. This is our bagging machine. This is what we do to create the ton bags of sand, ballast, stone, and type one. This is our control panel here for on and off and setting weights. Now we load the material into the hopper, which is here. We turn it on, and once we've turned it on, it gives it a big shake, and the conveyor belt here transports the material into the bags. This is the Asheville water tower. This is 20,000 liters of water, which is stored for the volumetric concrete lorries. Each time a volumetric concrete lorry loads, it's 2,200 liters of water. So if you can imagine, the three lorries are out and about on a daily basis, coming back to the yard, we need to make sure we have enough water in storage to never slow them down. So in simple terms, the water tower acts like a toilet. So every time it's flushed, it fills back up to the full height. This is our brand new red diesel tank, which is actually in the railway yard, not the main yard. We've had to put this in specifically for the LH60 because it's too big to track around the road to refuel in that yard. This is our cement silo, where we store all the cement needed to make concrete. At any one time, this silo can store 50 tons of cement. So when we receive a cement delivery, the cement is fed in through the bottom of the tank, 
and when we're ready to load one of our lorries, it's distributed from this chute here. So every day, whichever concrete lorry's back first pours concrete blocks. We continually make these and we can't possibly make enough. We use them for absolutely everything. Here's some we made earlier. This is our wheel wash, what we've put in place for two reasons. The first being we want to keep the tires nice and clean so we don't track any mud or debris onto the road and upset any of the residents. Two, we need to keep the lorries nice and clean because the newer lorries have a lot of sensors. When these sensors get dirty, sometimes they can throw false warnings onto the dashboard that you have a problem with your braking. So keeping them nice and clean is much better for maintenance. This section is the Asheville Railway Yard. I'll show you how it works. So firstly, we come over here and we close this gate. Right, so now this is secure, we need to take a walk up to the top of the yard. We always have to close the other gate first, and now we open this gate. Once the yard is secured at that point, it makes it safe for the trains to come in. And now trains can come in off the main line. This is our weigh bridge. This is where we weigh all the vehicles going in and out so we can make sure that we're not giving you too much or too little. The entire area is CCTV'd and we can see what is in the lorries at all times. However, if you like a manual look, you can take a walk up this viewing platform and take a look out and see what's in the back of the lorry. This is Simon, our trusty weigh bridge operator. Simon's making sure that everyone's getting exactly what they pay for. As you can see, Simon's very organized. He's got an entire bespoke Weybridge system built here, and we've also got a manual monitor here as well. We've got records of all the lorries that come in and out manually as well. The Type 1 stays in the railway yard because it actually comes off the train. We keep this material separate from the concrete material, like the sand and stone, which is in the main yard. The men's toilets. I'm quite happy with how I've set this place up. We've got lino on the floor and I've actually put the same lino on the walls and we've siliconed down in the corners, basically making it watertight. So when it gets dirty in here, and it does get dirty, we bring the jet washer in and we completely jet wash all the walls down, a bit of chemical, jet wash it all down again and out the door. And I'd like to point this out for everyone from Asheville who's watching this, stop putting blue roll in the toilet because you keep getting it blocked. Now at Asheville, we have ladies and gentlemen working here. So the ladies have obviously got a separate toilet. I am not gonna show the inside of the ladies toilets because I don't want them to get upset with me, but I can tell you it's a lot cleaner than the men's. This is the maintenance area where we carry out all repair and servicing. It's a concrete base with a scaffolding roof to try and keep the fitter nice and dry while he's working on the lorries and machines. We're always trying to make improvements. And one of the improvements we've done lately is concrete in this area and the pedestrian walkway over there. This is for people who turn up at this yard in very expensive cars and very expensive trainers and complain to me about how dirty they get, mentioning no names. Why don't I just give you a pair of boots to put on? Oh, no, I'm only using them, We try not to waste anything in the yard, and I especially love these. The boys in the construction firm, they get old pieces of timber and they make little chairs like this so we can all sit around and have a chat on a break. Sprinklers. We've got a lot of sprinklers dotted out everywhere in the yard. These are fantastic for dust suppression. So what we do is we line them all up against the outside fence here, and then on a hot day, we turn them on and it suppresses all the rising dust. The containers are a big part of the build-up in the Asheville city. We kind of use the containers like Tetris. We kind of fit them into different places, and we use them for storage, for offices, for kitchens, for all sorts of things. So in this container, we've got the essentials to keep the lorries and the machines going. We've got oils, uh, we've got fluids, and we've got small parts, just to get us out of stuck if there's a problem. As you look around the yard, you'll see that I'm really big on signs. We have signs everywhere. Those are for people that work here, and those are for visitors. It's basically telling you where you are, telling you what to do, and also reminding you of things. Even inside the containers, we've got small bits of information on the walls, like this notice here. It basically tells you what oils we have and what exactly they're used for. Kitchen and mess room area. I hate spiders, man. Every single day, this spider has come back and put a web here. Every time, and my head goes straight into the middle of it. So in this area, um, you can come and have a coffee, you can eat your lunch, you can store your food in the fridge, um, you can come and get some fresh chilled water. Um, this area is just for people when they're having a break or when they want to take five minutes to sit down. Um, we have a changing room at the back there as well. Now this is very important. This is the clocking in system with the finger. If you don't clock in and I don't see you, you might not get paid for the day. Also in every area, very important, we've got a full first aid kit and an eye wash station. Now I'm sorry to bring this up, but I have to. Walkie talkies. Walkie talkies, great to use in the yard. Somebody's on the machine, someone's in the lorry, you can't shout, they're not gonna hear you, we use walkie talkies. If you have a look over here, 
You'll see, two walkie-talkies are missing. Where are they? I asked my staff. I don't know, Dan. So at the back of this container, we've made a small office which we call the concrete lab. This is the area where we store all our concrete products and all our equipment. And also, we carry out all our testing of our materials and our cubes. I'll show you what I mean. We write down all our results. <laughs> oh, I'm proud to say that Asheville Concrete are a BSI company. And as part of our obligations to BSI, we have to carry out internal testing of the concrete which we create to make sure that we're meeting strengths. This area has been designed so we can continue to quality manage and improve. For instance, we have a bowl here where we collect sand, the sand goes in the microwave, and we can check the moisture content of the sand continuously, and we can make notes of this. This curing tank is designed to keep our concrete cubes at the right temperature, so when we send them off for crushing, they're accurate. So you've seen all the kit in the yard, now let's have a look from a bird's eye view. Now we're back on the ground, let's have a look in the office. So the ground floor office is for the construction firm and a videographer. In this area, we deal with everything construction based. So you can see people looking at plans, you can see them looking at engineering plans here, you can see them looking at work schedules, uh, you can see them, everything to do with construction is done in this area. This is what we like to call the variation bell. A variation is any work which is outside the original scope of works, which will be an additional charge. This is the videographer's office. This is where it's all made possible to have a YouTube channel and all the videos what you see on social media. It's always the small things what I like. And I'd like to point out that this was my idea. Have a look at this. It's cool, isn't it? Now this is a custom area which I had built for a videographer when we decided that we were gonna enter the content market and share it with the entire world. So this is a soundproof wall what we built. Uh, we have a whiteboard for meetings, etc. when we're brainstorming. At the moment we have one videographer working from these dual screens. And if I do say so myself, that is a state-of-the-art Mac. Over here, we have another station ready for when we expand our production team. Now look out, because we'll be hiring soon. So the aggregates, concrete and waste management office is directly above the construction office. So let's go and take a look at what they're doing. In this office, on this side, we've got administration, uh, we've got accounts, we've got credit control, we've got our new salesman, Sam, give us a wave. That's our new salesman, we're expecting great things from him. And I'll show you the other side of the office. Over here is transport and operational, which Terry's having to do by himself at the moment. As you all know, this is Tezza. Do you know what I love about Terry? He's keeping on a very brave face. I heard a Terry effing and blinding earlier <laughs> about what was going on. And because the camera's here, he's been nice and polite. My man might be watching. Yeah. Good man, Tezza. Terry cut his hair for filming. What? <laughs> what time did you go in the barbers? <laughs> hey, Terry knew he was going to be on camera, so Terry got a haircut last night. Look, he's fresh. <laughs> Five to seven in the barbers. I was the last one in. <laughs> Now my office is not the biggest of spaces, but there's plenty I can do with the square footage that we've got in here. Uh, first thing you'll notice is I work off a dual screen as well, and I've got a lot of cameras in here. So our cameras record 24 seven, and I can go back up to 12 weeks and see exactly what happened when, which is always very helpful. I think I've shown you everything in the Asheville Yard. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. But for now, I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville. You got it, yeah? Um, I'll meet you in the edit suite in 10. There's a couple of lorries need to be loaded and go straight back out. So in 10, yeah? We've got to put this out first thing tomorrow. All right? All right.